So I suppose we shouldn't say anything like shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Now you're not going to be able to see. Now turn on the back ones. And turn oh, on the front. There you go. There we go. Now don't be nervous. There's a video camera. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You can edit all this out. Hello, class. <laughs> My presentation is called Bronies versus Hasbro, the Derpy Debate by Victor Clark. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about the manliest show ever put on television. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. <laughs> now, I know what most of you are probably thinking right now, oh god, more of this, seriously, <sighs> what? <laughs> well, to everyone who's thinking I'm a weirdo for doing this, all I have to say is, shut up. I really don't care. I'm looking, I've been looking forward to this for a while, I'm not going to skip this opportunity. Moving forward. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is a fourth generation series based on My Little Pony. It's hosted on the Hub Network, hosted by Hasbro and Studio B, and was written, produced, and directed by Lauren Faust. Now, if you don't know who Lauren Faust is, you probably know the work she's been in. She's a big name in animation, being a writer, producer on many big series like The Powerpuff Girls, Fox of Home for Imaginary Friends, Conan Kids Next Door, and also worked in several big movies like The Iron Giant and the animation for Sawyer and Castone Dance, which is a supremely underrated movie in my opinion. Now, Lauren Faust's experience in writing, animating, and uh, producing, she managed to really understand what it takes to make a really good TV show. And because that, she managed to turn a formerly mindless piece of crap show, which was mainly just to sell girls' toys, into a really well-written, well-executed, generally great animated series featuring the main cast of characters who are both relatable and really complex with all of their own flaws and emotions and really believable characters. It also has an outstanding Flash animation, which is why it got popular around a lot of older people. Because, you know, it was really well animated, and a lot of people appreciated for how diverse all the dynamics of the show were. It also features a lot of really well animated, complex, and legitimately threatening villains like Discord, Luna and Queen Chrysalis, who was just featured in the season two finale. It also features a lot of great action scenes, and it is not like you'd see from most other girl shows. And yes, Fluttershy is breaking the neck of a bear. Don't worry, the bear lives. And because of this, this man should make a whole new fandom called Bronies. Basically, men age 15 to 35 who really appreciated the show for what it was. And because of this, it created a whole new fandom, much like Trekkies of the Star Trek, or Whovians of Doctor Who. That's actually a pretty accurate portrayal of this. <laughs> but the fandom managed to make a whole big line of different ideas and fandoms, and going to different type of mediums. Independent musicians on YouTube, like The Living Tombstone, Jack Lab, and Micro Microphone, started making songs and whole albums dedicated to the show and its characters, getting millions of hits on YouTube and really making legitimately great music. There were fan animations made, like the Mob series on YouTube, which is really popular, and a lot of parodies on stuff like CollegeChambers.com's My Little Brony, and Mad on Cartoon Network has a skit called My Little War Horse, which featured one of the voice actresses. Fanfic started becoming really well known and well regarded in the fandom, like My Little Dashy, On Cross and Arrow, and the highly gory Cupcakes. I would not recommend that. Some fan writers are messed up. Also, websites like DeviantArt and Imgur were starting to get full of unique and really well made fan art from artists. Because of the animation, the way the show was presented, it really showed the artistic creativity of the fans as they made such really good fan art like this. And in less than two years, the show only came out in 2010. In 
less than two years, imagine going to so many different fandoms and different areas of pop culture. I mean, it's hard to find anything on the internet that doesn't have a comedy-related subtext with it. I mean, if you find anything on the internet, there's bound to be something related with it. And I mean anything. <laughs> Multipass? Of course, the biggest thing that the fandom has done in relation to the show's creation is with how it incorporated background characters. I mean, Studio B made a lot of background characters just to fill up space. However, the bronies managed to find certain characters and really develop them more than the show did. Giving them backstory, giving them personalities, fan animations, fan art, all kinds of different things, and even naming them, which the show has actually used and incorporated, like Violin Bon Bon, Vinyl Scratch, aka DJ Pump 3, Octavia, Barry Punch, and probably one of my personal favorites, Dr. Hoops. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not even a big Doctor Who fan. I find this really a cool thing to see. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. However, the one character that's gotten the most popular in both the fandom and in the show itself is Derpy Hoops, AKA Ditsy Do. Now, Derpy can first be seen in the very first episode until someone on 4chan pointed out that her eyes were going in different directions which is sometimes known on the internet as derping. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. I never thought I'd use that in a college presentation. <laughs> anyway, because of the attention that the character receives to Arlie, she became one of the most popular characters in the fandom, actually becoming almost as popular as the main six. Tons of fan art, tons of songs, tons of fan animations were made about her, and her character was developed Really, she had a lot of development with her character. So what started off as a light animation error turned into a fully developed character. A Pegasus, who delivers, who is identified as being the male delivery pony of Ponyville, having a daughter named Dinky, and having a love for muffins. She's also known a lot of fans of having, of being the assistant for Dr. Hoops. And yeah, it really is unique how much attention was given to this one character who was originally just an accident. And she sort of became a mascot for the Brony community. And Studio B and Hasbro knows this, and they incorporated it into the show more. These are all screenshots from the show. And what you can see that she sort of became an Easter egg for the show, for the Bronies to notice in every episode, finding her in the background, with the eyes the way they originally were. Of course, the biggest nod to the fandom was in Season 2, Episode 14, The Last Round, where she was not only given lines to speak, but was named by her fan-given name. So yeah, how did the Bronies react when seeing that their fan-made character was actually being used in the show? Kind of like that. They went nuts. It was by far the biggest achievement that the fandom achieved because of this. I mean, they loved the fact that a character, which was originally an accident that they actually cared for, was actually being noticed and used by the writers of the show. However, this didn't last long. Soon after the episode's premiere, certain fans and concerned parents were wondering whether or not Derpy was considered an ableist character. Seeing that her eyes went in different directions, the tone of her voice and her clumsy nature 
made some people think that she was being offensive to those with mental disabilities. Because, yeah, cartoons never had a character like that in the animation. <laughs> no, not at all. And yeah, that's probably the most offensive thing towards the mentally handicapped, isn't it? I am so sorry for using that. I'm just trying to prove a point. <laughs> Where does that come from? Uh, I think it was 4chan as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's 4chan. Well, that's right. makes it easier. <laughs> However, about a month after the episode's premiere, when it was finally released on iTunes for sale, people realized why it was released so late. Hasbro took the complaint seriously, and the episode was edited. You don't want to do any more damage than you've already done. I just don't know what went wrong. Yeah, it's a mystery. Nice work, Rainbow Dash! Most of the fans were pissed. And what, what, anything else? Uh, Actually, there is a list right here. Okay, voice In the fine. iTunes alteration, the voice of Derby was changed to sound more feminine. Okay, yeah, yeah. And also, the tone of Rainbow Dash was changed to sound less angry. The animation was also changed, so her eyes were less dirt, and make her change with Rainbow Dash to make her face seem less angry when confronting her. And also, Rainbow Dash no longer calls her by the fan given name of Derby. And the only people who didn't notice this were those who watched it with closed captioning. However, all the other bronies were pissed. <laughs> oh, What's a brony on that? <laughs> yeah, it was like Jar Jar Binks level of nerd rage resulted from this alteration. That's big. <laughs> so, what was the dilemma here? Well, on one hand, a character in a popular children's television show was being seen as offensive to some viewers, and they didn't want to lose any respect that they get as a television show. However, the character also represented a large portion of a new fan base, which really had just as much attention and revenue from the show as the kids. So either way, whatever have, whatever they have or was going to do was bound to upset some people. And Brody's took a lot of action with this. A petition called Save Derby was put online on websites like Change.org, which gained tens of thousands of signatures in a matter of days. I've been getting up to 50,000 signatures. Letters and emails were sent to both Hasbro and Studio B, as well as several other people within the production of the company, urging them to ask why this happened and why they can't get the original version. And some even sent death threats. Yes, death threats over a cartoon. Yeah, that's kind of sad. And also, DeviantArt was full of sad derby fan art. So many people were so upset about this, about the idea that their character was being taken away. And trust me, this is the light stuff. There's fan art of her killing herself, of her being beaten up, of all kinds of different things. You should be lucky I'm showing just that. Well, this upper, the one in the upper right is actually rather fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the lipstick, which is, which is, you know, lipstick on a pig. I, it's uh, an icon for um, the, 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 the uh, disactualization of self in order to fit in. And I think in, in, in our uh, modern American history, a really good example of that was the, uh, uh, going back to the time of the, uh, the Harlem Renaissance, the, uh, the uh, uh, popularity of straightening of African American hair uh, in order to look, well, how many of you saw that Malcolm X movie? Where, and remember that scene where he says, oh, it looks white? Well, that was, uh, a, a, that was lipstick on a pig moment where, in which a, a, an oppressed minority or a put upon is uh, uh, lipsticking themselves to, tr uh, to try to gain legitimacy. Huh, that's an interesting point. Yeah, so it's, I mean, this guy's thinking. 
Yeah, there was you know, a lot. These two are just sad. This guy has tapped into something that is that is very much a part of uh, our political and social history. Yeah, there is a lot of political and social artwork involved with this show. It really does have a huge fan base in regards to thinking like that. And all of this drama, all of this anger, all of this confusion was because of an alteration to a cartoon, Pegasus. So Hasbro actually did take action shortly after, in which a uh, spokeswoman of Hasbro, Nicola Angelo, explained, the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic series has always been about acceptance and inclusion, and the series strives to convey that through the playful antics of a diverse, cares, diverse cast of characters. Some viewers felt that the aspects of the episode of the last round did not stay true to the core message of friendship, which is the heart and soul of the series. And they clarified that it's only to a single episode. Basically, they felt that the attitude towards the character, including how the episode, including how the name Derby was used, wasn't as appropriate as they originally intended. However, they did keep her in the show, making her still the Easter egg of the series. These are in later episodes, including the season two finale, The Royal Wedding. <coughs> As you can see, she's still there. She still has the dark eyes. But why did this happen? Why did the alteration occur in the first place? Well, for one thing, Derpy was originally a slur term. I think the origin of it was Trey Parker and Matt Stone of South Park. Rod Schneider is Derpy Derp. And even though that wasn't the intention of the character Derpy Hooves, many people still see Derpy as a slur which it originally was, and even if the name has a different meaning now, not everyone will notice that, especially those who aren't aware of the character beforehand. Also, Hasbro is only supposed to appeal to kids first. While they appeal to all different kinds of fans, and they definitely show they can appeal to adults, it is originally a kids program, and they have different standards. Bronies don't really have any say in the show. Derby was and will always be a Hasbro character. And even though Bronies did help develop her in the way she is now, it's still, they still don't really have any say in the show in the role of Joe, have all the control of her. Also, some people were offended by this. Now, there were some testimonies from fans saying that they know people with disabilities who really did look up to Derby and thought she was a great character. But there were those who were offended, and that is the big issue here. And also, Hasbro has had problems with unintentional name problems before. The most recent example was in 2010 with the character Spastic from Transformers. Because it turned out that in Great Britain, Spastic was a slur towards cerebral palsy. And after a lawsuit was made, the toy was pulled off the market in Britain. Yeah, but, but uh, in my era in elementary school, Spastic was a, you know, it, a term used for you know, nerdy, nervous, spastic. Yeah, right. Uh, and uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. As you can see, Hasbro has had this problem before, and so because of how they deal with it here, it shouldn't be any surprise that they would deal with the same way with the name Derpy. So, what are my final thoughts? Mm, whatever. Derpy is still in the show. While she's while she might not be seen as a character who's talking or is known by her name, she's still in the background of the show as she was before. So nothing's really changed. The studio still loves and really appreciates the Brony fandom. And a lot of writers on the show, animators, and especially the voice actors like Tara Strong have really taken a shine to the Brony community and really love that they're giving the show such support. The unedited episode of The Last Round Up is still easy to find. You can find all the episodes of the two seasons up on YouTube. The first season is available on Netflix. I think season two is going to be available on Netflix as well soon. And I think it's actually more easy to find the unedited episode of this than it is to find the iTunes edit. The show is still awesome. I mean, despite what people say, Derby is not the reason the show is good. It was good because of the writing and because the show took itself seriously. It made itself more than a show for little girls. And Derby was just a nice addition. And also, the fandom has really stopped really going that big about the Derby thing. After the announcement from Hasbro, they realized that they were making a big overblown proportions over it. And many have apologized on behalf of the community for their actions. And they still love the show. In fact, last weekend was a season two finale in which was called The Royal Wedding. Wedding Shed was their highest rating show ever 
on the channel since it premiered. And if anyone is curious about the work in Warren Faust, she's also she left after season one to try to work on a personal project called Milky Way and the Galaxy Girls, which more people should check out. You can join the Sources of it at MilkyWayandTheGalaxyGirls.com. Thank you. Cool. All right. Uh, a couple of yeah, okay. questions. Um, now, what conclusion do you draw then ethically? Uh, um, in other words, what kind of responsibility does a production company have to its fan base in regard to the portrayal of um, the character? Minor minority groups or other uh, groups that might be culturally uh, challenged. Well, the fact is, even though My Little Pony is popular among the adult fan base, it's still a show primarily for kids and young kids. And because of that, there are different standards than would with most other shows. So would you say, then, that that they made the ethically right choice to edit that character for the show? Um, yeah, overall, I, I can understand why they chose to edit the character. And they did in a way that still showed that they do care about the Brony fan base, but still making sure they don't offend the kid fan base as well. Right. Now, another uh, thing, just because I'm, uh, you know, PhDs were trained in close reading. Um, could that final scene not be interpreted as when she comes up out of the hole and her eyes are straight but they've been knocked that way. In other cartoons, you fall into the hole, you come up and your eyes are dirt. The dirt dies, falls into the hole, comes up and her eyes are straight. I'm not quite sure about some of the decisions, but I'm not quite sure why they did the animation changes on the character because I don't feel the dirt eyes were that big of an indicator of being offensive to the mentally challenged as much as the voice was. However, uh, that was the action of Studio B, and right, but, but it would be interesting to find out from the uh, the uh, now that was a change, however. Yeah. But um, it actually seems to make sense to me, given what happens to other cartoon characters when they fall into holes and things blow up. Um, True. Although the voice change is much more difficult to, in other words, that that's. I, I could see arguing the eye change uh, in a completely different uh, kind of a literary tra trajectory um, as, as the voice. But anyway. All right, good job. Thank you. Is, uh, Ace has got it. Ace? Oh, that's right. Ace is mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs>